Hello everyone! Today I'd like to show you how I'm going to cast the bottom part for my steam whistle. Okay, so as you can see I already made a couple of parts of the steam whistle. But uh, in this video I'm only going to focus on casting the bottom part of the whistle, which is the part that needs to be soldered into the bottom and where through the steam will be blown into the whistle. So we will let these parts rest for a while. The reason why I'm going to use lost wax casting is because I do not have a lathe to accurately make the part, so by casting the part I can get around that. I started melting some copper on my coal forge and casting it in sand, just as an experiment, but that was a lot of work, so I quickly turned to a propane forge. I first did a quick test with my Tetzlu burner to see how much uh, power that would have, but that could barely get it to melt. So then I made this. So to make a mold I made this uh, simple wax piece from a candle and drilled a hole in it to see how well that would cast. Crushed up a fire brick and put it through a screen so only the dust was left. Then I mixed it 50-50 with some ordinary fast setting modeling plaster to make the mold fire resistant. Then I melted out the wax, poured in some brass and the mold held up pretty well. But I did not burn out the wax hot enough because I was anxious to break the mold. So while casting the leftover wax bubbled a lot. So that gave a very ugly result in the cast piece. But the hole went pretty well. For my future molds I bought this 25 kilogram bag of Chemet for only 17 bucks. And this is also a crushed up fire brick but this makes it of course a lot easier. So then it was time for the real wax piece. So I've placed this funnel in the sand and I just removed a bit of sand here so I could see this line because this is the line to which I need to fill the funnel with wax. So now let's fill her up. Maybe we need some extra light here. See, much better. Now we'll fill the funnel with uh, candle wax. Okay, now the wax has set, you get this out, I'll just break it a little, just deform the funnel and then it just needs some kinetic motivation to come out, oh come on ye, it's not important. Look, there it is, almost done. I only have to do some shaping. Again, did not do the burnout long enough, but it was a little better. Okay, so I've made a new wax piece, but before I put it in a mold, uh, let me first show you what I changed about the measurements. Okay, this casting is about 40 millimeters and needs to be 41. So the wax model I made, I just cut this piece of brass here and widen it a bit. So it has now a diameter of 42 plus something. Taped it off with a bit of duct tape. So the wax piece that is now going into the mold is one millimeter bigger so that after casting the brass when the brass shrinks then it will have the right size, I hope.
Okay, the wax is now all melted out. So now I will do a burnout to burn out the candle wax that's been absorbed by the plaster. There's some big bubbles in there, so I have to see if I can make something of it. Just clean it up a bit. Okay, it's not the worst, but also not the best. Quite some bubbles in here. So I have to think about... Well, first let's measure it. This size... 41 so it should fit in the pipe perfectly look at that so that's something that worked perfectly the bottom part looks pretty good not bad so to the new wax piece i added some sprues so the air bubbles could get out After all this experimentation and the frustration, I uh, noticed that uh, most of these holes are filled with slag. And uh, I also noticed that these sprues I made, because I thought these were caused by air bubbles, I thought more sprues meant that the air could escape more easily. But if you look at these sprues, they're actually quite nice. So I think the whole problem I have is that there's slag going into the mold. And you can also see here in this picture I took of the mold, precisely on the spots where the bubbles are, that there is also slag in the mold. I'm 99% sure that this is a slag problem. So to prevent slag from going into the mold, I'm going to weld in a piece of steel strip. It needs to be positioned about here, so that the molten metal will flow from behind this piece of metal, so the slag which always float on the top, will not come out of here. But first I need to clean up this crucible because it's filled with slag and pieces of metal and stuff.
This time I just made a simple wax piece for a quick test. No, just as bad as it was before. Okay, so because making a plaster mold every time I want to do a test is just too time consuming, I'm going back to sand casting. And I did that just by using normal sand mixed in with a bit of bentonite clay. And I got that clay from a moisture absorbent packs, which you can often find in packages when they're sent to you. So they're pretty easy to come by. So this is just a mixture. I need to make that a little bit more moist. So, because I think the only problem I have is that I'm having slag in my casting. I need to remove that. And I'm now just going to scrape it off before I cast because I saw someone do that. And also because the problem I have, I think, is I use this stuff, which are just uh, grass machining chips, or whatever it's called. And uh, Although it's a good source of uh, brass, it also has a lot of surface area, so also a lot of oxide will form when you heat it. So if you don't put borax in it, your uh, molten metal and your oxide will mix together very well and you just get a solid lump instead of uh, molten brass. So that's why I put in the borax, which works very well. But because of that, I kept using the borax and I think a little bit too much. So it really set me on the wrong path, you could say. So maybe now I find the right path. We'll see. Okay, so this cast has no inclusions or slag or whatsoever in it because I scraped it all off before pouring the metal. But when I was editing the video I noticed a big difference in how the first casting and the last casting looked. And I think the problem here is that the quality of the brass got less and less because I kept remelting it. And I'm not sure what really is going on but to eliminate this problem I bought these pieces of brass from the scrapyard. This time I did not use any borax, I just scraped off the oxide layer.
Yes, finally. This is very pretty. No inclusions, no bubbles. So now we'll make a mold for the actual part. I hope it goes as well as this one. Okay, so I'll do the final casting in the next steam whistle video and then I will also explain how the rest of the steam whistle works. So until that time, thanks for watching and see you next time.